Hello everyone and welcome to this quick video on the fabrication workflow for laser cutters. The first thing you need to understand is that our fabrication workflow is broken up into two parts. The first part, which you already know, is CAD, which is computer aided design. Softwares like AutoCAD, Rhino, Vectorworks, 3ds Max, Revit, whatever you're using, this is your CAD software. The next part and the crucial part for fabrication is what's called CAM, and that's computer aided manufacturing. CAM is the software that speaks the language of your fabrication tool. So for example, when we're talking to a laser cutter, the laser cutter doesn't understand a Rhino drawing or a Rhino model. What it understands is where to move in the X and Y axis, how fast to do that. And so what we need to do is convert our drawing or model into that language that our machine will understand. Now, every laser cutter is different and every fabricator will have their own way of working. So you always need to send an email first and ask what they prefer. But typically, a laser cutter will understand things in terms of colored lines and fills. So for example, we might set our red lines to be cuts, our blue lines to be scores, and anything as a fill will be an engrave. And then we might change the colors of our fills to give different depths or powers of engraves. And finally, we have the actual file format. Typically, you'll see this is submitted in either an SVG file or a DXF file. But once again, ask your chosen fabricator and they'll tell you which file type they prefer. When we're laser cutting, we also have two different types of fabricating. And this really depends on the type of model you're trying to create. So we have component assembly, where we cut out individual parts and then we erect them together, glue them together and make the three dimensional geometry from the flat planes. Or we have what's called section lamination, where we cut our model down into slices in Rhino, then cut those slices out one by one, then glue them all together in a laminated three dimensional model. Okay, so we need to decide whether we're doing component assembly or section lamination. And then once we've done that, we need to convert our drawing into lines and then put it into an SVG and DXF format. So how do we do that? Let's have a look at how we do this in Rhino. Okay, so we're in Rhino now and I've got two different model types that we want to look at. This one over here is a large architectural model, might be a presentation model. And it's sitting on a base that's two meters by 700 mil so it's quite a large architectural model this is already ready to go at the scale we want it to be in the model form so i know that the thickness of these column arms or fronds if we want to call them that is three millimeters so if i go over to here this is at the real scale that i want it to be at ready to go i can see that down here I look at that it is currently set to three millimeters so this is the scale i want it to be it's ready to go i've tested it in rhino and it looks good so i'm happy with that and then i've got another one over here which is a little surface model this is much more of a solid so we can see that this one here pertains more to our component assembly type so we can cut out each one of these little pieces and i've already designed it so that each one of these will slot nicely into the one above as well. So we can see there that this slot, which is here, will slot down into there and then they'll fit in there nicely together. And then inside that, if I pull out two of these, we'll see that I've also made these little cross section slots inside the base of the model as well. And they will just fit into there nicely once we put them all together, they will sit there perfectly in the grid just like this. So you can see really that that pertains to our component assembly. Whereas this model here, because it's one big solid and doesn't really look like it could be made out of a bunch of components glued together, what we need to do is use the lamination technique for this one. So let's go through how both of them work. And we'll start with the component assembly method. So first thing we need to do is start identifying the different components we want. So I know I want one of these, one of these, and then the rest of that's just repeated so I can copy those over. And then I want one of the base as well. So once we know which components we want, we start using the duplicate face border tool. So type in dupe face border. There it is, it comes up already. I select the surface that I want, press enter. And then I'm just going to move that to the side for now. So that's made a nice solid curve for me. I see on a closed curve added to selection. That's great. Hit spacebar to use the same tool again. Spacebar. And I'm just going to move that one off as well. 
So that's our two main parts. And then one for the base as well. And then let's move that one over here as well. So we've got our base, our bottom part of the component and our top part of the component. And so what we need to do now is lay them out flat so that when we send them over as a drawing, they will be on a flat ground plane ready for our fabricator to just cut them out using the laser cutter. Okay, so really quickly, we can just lay these down, rotate that by 90 and move it out of the way for a sec. This one, I need to rotate by this direction 90 first, and then this direction 90 as well. 90. Okay, there we go. We've got these two, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and make my life easier. Rotate that by 180 so that these two are offsetting each other a little bit and we can get them nice and close together. Whoop! And there we go. Glad I double checked. That didn't quite rotate properly, so we're just going to Command Z that one. And let's rotate it together again. We can see that's where it went wrong. So, okay. Do it slow this time. Make sure we're all good. Let's go to 90. And then rotate this one again. 90 again. And then here we are. Perfect, there we go. Okay, now I want to have these all on the same ground plane. I can see that this is currently hovering off the ground plane and this is hovering even higher off the ground plane. So what we need to do is first, I'm going to get them all at the same level. That's the first thing I wanna do. I'm just gonna make a little bit of room for myself over here, move this over there out of the way. All right, so I grab these ones. I type in move, I click vertical because I only wanna move it in the vertical direction. Now I'm going to click anywhere on here and then level with my base. We now see that these are all in the same plane. Next thing I'm going to do is move all of these to be at the 0, 0, 0 coordinate just to make our lives a little bit easier and make sure it's all on the ground plane ready for our fabricator. So type in move again. This time I'm going to do 0, 0, 0. Hit enter. And that's going to move it there for us. And actually, I'm just gonna do that again, make sure that worked properly, it didn't look like it did. So move, this is our base point we want. Zero comma zero comma zero. There we go, that time it has worked. So I can see that it's now sitting at zero zero at that base point there. Okay, so next thing we need to do is actually make sure we have the right number of each one of these. And this is dependent on our thickness. So. I know that I'm going to be using a three mil board when I cut this out and I'm just going to laminate them over the top of each other. I've designed these so that they sit nine millimeters inside that base there. So I can see that it's coming down by nine millimeters inside there. That means I need three of these cut out, ready to go. And then everything that's underneath that, the rest of the thickness, I'm just going to cut out with a table saw. So for the laser cutter, I just need this one here times three. So I'm going to make three copies of that. One and two. There we go. And then these ones I need 30 copies of because I've got 10 times three and I've got one at each of those points. So I know I need 30 of each of those ready to go. So what I can do instead of labor intensively copying them all one by one, I'm just going to do an array. So I'm going to make this a little bit cleaner for myself. Make sure these are nice and tight together first so that we don't waste too much space. There we are, that's looking a bit better. Now I'm going to do an array. Type in array. And then let's go ahead and try and space this out nicely. So we'll do a little test first. I'm gonna try and just do, maybe let's go with three. Three by 10 might go too far. Let's try a five by six. So we'll go five the x direction, six in the y direction, none in the z direction, or just one. And then there's our spacing. We can zoom in, make sure we're not getting any overlaps. We are not at that point there. That looks pretty good. I can get that a bit tighter. We click, zoom out. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And I press enter to finish. And there we go, we have our file now ready to send off to the laser cutter. So we've got our three elements for the base, 
three mils plus three mils plus three mils equals nine millimeters. So that's gonna give us the full depth for us to be able to plug down into these little holes. And then I have 30 of these ready to be inserted into one another and then into the hole. So that's all ready to go. What I would do is I would just come over to top view. I would then delete my model out of here, grab everything that I need, and then go to file, save as, save a new Rhino file before I do anything, because I don't want to accidentally overwrite the original model I had. And then I'll go to file, export selected, and I'm going to make this a DXF. So I'm going to call this one my Y columns array as a DXF, click save. I'm going to follow the default options, click OK. And there we have it, successfully saved as a DXF. So that is the standard drawing template to getting through to a DXF. I'm going to show you in just a second how to make a SVG as well for your secondary file type. Sometimes fabricators prefer an SVG. But first, let's get this little model here also put out into a drawing set so we can take both over together into Illustrator to make the SVG. Okay, let's change back over to our perspective view for now. So this was the component tree version and we can see we've got all of our component tree laid out there beautifully ready to go. Now what we want to do is follow some different steps to do our lamination procedure. Now we could use the contour tool like we've shown in previous videos to cut some sections through here and then pull out the sections. But fortunately for us, there's actually a plugin called Section Tools, which does a lot of the workload for us. So what you need to do is go and download the plugin for Rhino called Section Tools. It's freely available. You install it and then we're going to use the Section Tools to do the following. Okay, so Rhino Section Tools, just type in Rhino Section Tools in Google. Top one is Rhino Section Tools. Then all you need to do is click over here on the right hand side, click download, and then it's gonna take you to the one that you need. So most of you will be on Rhino 7. You click download, double click on the download when it's complete, and then you're going to install that into Rhino. It will ask you to open up Rhino, You'll install it and you close down Rhino and reopen it. And once you reopen it, you'll be able to see section tools back inside here as well. So what we need to do is create a polyline, the length of the model that you want to take. Then we need a point at this start point there. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab both that poly and that line and that point, sorry, and move it out here. Next thing I'm gonna do is an array along the curve, and I'm going to take these points and array them along this curve here. So set path curve is this one here. And then the distance between each point is going to be the thickness of our material. Now, obviously, if we have a really thick material, it's gonna mean that we have a big jump every time we go through here. So if I use 10 millimeters, I'm gonna have a 10 millimeter thickness, and then it'll come down to here, and then I have a 10 millimeter thickness, and then over to here, 10 millimeter thickness, and I'm gonna lose a lot of this curvature. So I need to be careful about not only considering what materials the fabricator has, but also what thickness is going to give me the optimum resolution for whatever it is that I'm making. So I need relatively small chunks, but I can't really afford to do any one mil timber or anything like that and it's going to take way too long for laser cutting hours so i need to meet somewhere in the middle so what i want to do is a three mil ply or a three mil acrylic so i'm going to change this distance to three hit enter and then we're happy with that it's going to make 51 items along here and that is it okay so this is going to give us all of our section points now so we go back up into section tools we're going to go to create then it's asking us what we want to section. Press enter when done. The standard setup is fine, so I'm just going to click enter, and then it asks us to start doing our sections. And then we just click one by one until we've got all of our sections done. And I'll go ahead and I'll zoom through this now. Cool. Then we click enter, and it's going to make all of our sections for us. 
which we can see here, it's now carved the sections. The next step we want to do is actually zoom back out to our top view. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a sheet, the sheet size that we're going to fabricate onto. So this is just to help me position my sections when I spread them all out in just a second. It's not a vital step and most of the time the fabricator is going to reorganize these for you anyway, but it's just going to help me know where I am. So I know my sheet size is A2. So A2 is 594 by 420. And there we go, we have our A2 size sheet there. And I'm just going to move that down. And usually what I like to do is just give myself a copy just in case we find that we need an extra one. And there we have it ready to go. Okay, so now I'm ready to go back into my perspective view so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to take all of these sections that we have in here and then lay them out flat, just like we've done here, into these A2 sheet sizes ready to go. So we go back into our section tools and we go to 2D layout. Grab all of the sections, press enter. Then it's going to give you each one of the sections one by one. I like to do this in top view mode now that I can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to come down into here and I don't want anything to be too close together but by the same token I don't want to waste any room on our sheet either because that sheet is material usually come from trees or fossil fuels so let's be conservative and I'll zoom through this now. Okay, so that's our sections laid out. And then we have something which is really, really cool provided to us by the section tools, which is a little piece of text which numbers each one of these components. Now, at the moment, they're just dots. So as we zoom out, they get bigger. As we zoom in, they keep getting smaller and smaller. What we wanna do is actually use them as text so that we can engrave them onto each piece while we're laser cutting so that we know exactly where each piece goes while we're gluing and we don't accidentally glue the wrong one in place. So in order to convert the dots to text, all we need to do is type in convert dots. There we go. And then it's going to ask us which dots we want. So I'm just going to grab all of the dots. Okay, we've got them all selected, press enter. It's asking us, what do we want to do? Do we want to delete the inputs? Yes, we do. We want it to output as text. The text height, four millimeters is fine. That's legible, but nice and small. And then horizontal align is fine. Vertical align, we want middle. And then we press enter. Okay, so that's given us our text dots. Now, as we see, each one of these is currently sitting underneath its corresponding section. That's not very helpful to us because once this is cut out, this won't be on there anymore and we won't be able to find it. So there's no point in engraving it because we'll end up losing our place anyway. So what we wanna do is move them so that they're in the correct position. So I find that this one actually wants to be over in the left corner over there. That looks better. We can see on all of these, they're now on each one. And then what we're gonna do is we'll type in explode and that's going to turn it into text, which we can see now. At the moment, this is text, but it's not going to be able to be engraved or recognized by the laser, so we needed to explode that first. I'm gonna go ahead and do that for all of these now. Okay, so I'm all done now, and what you'll find is sometimes we end up with these tiny little pieces at the end, because that's where the edge of our clipping file was. So if we jump back to our model here, we see that 50 is actually slicing right on this very edge of the line here. So all it's actually picking up is the infinitely small curve. So it's nothing and it wouldn't actually correspond to anything because this chunk here, 49, is the part that would take up that three mils of space anyway. So what we can do is we can go ahead and delete any of those superfluous little lines. There we go save us from engraving things we don't need to engrave. Okay, so there we have it. That's all laid out nicely for us there. Didn't need the extra sheet and we've got a nice chunk of extra space left over and that is all reusable material now. Don't be concerned if you can't get these section tools working though or installed for any reason. There is a manual way to do this as well. So all you need to do is type in section 
select object for sections. Then we are going to follow exactly the same process as we did before. Instead of clicking on the point, we're going to drag our sections through each point. And so we would just go all the way up through here. Exactly the same process I did takes about as long. The only difference is we will have these sections vertically laid out here. So all we would need to do is move them out of the way once we're done and then just rotate them 90 degrees, flatten them out and then put them all on the same Z axis like we did before with the other objects. The only real difference is that we don't have the text on top of these sections. But of course, we can just add those in manually in Illustrator. We have to move around the text in Illustrator anyway to make it into a score. So it's really not taking that much time. So if you can't get the plugin working, don't worry too much. The workaround works just as well. I'm even going to go ahead and delete this little model because we don't need it now. And then I can once again do a file save as, and then I'm going to do my export selected. This time I'm going to call it surface spheres laminate. Default is okay again. File successfully saved, beautiful. Okay, so now what we wanna do is go over to Adobe Illustrator. All right, once we're in Illustrator, we go over to File, Open, and we go and find our drawings that we've just created. So I've got my Y columns array and my surface laminate. First one I'm gonna open is my Y columns. And then we've got a few settings that we need to follow here. So yes, we want it to be original size because it was already the size we wanted ready for modeling. I'm dealing in millimeters, not pixels. Got to be very careful of that because it would have thrown all of the scale out there, all of our hard work that we've already done. So make sure we are at one is to one on millimeters. We're doing our model and we're going to center the artwork. Don't merge the layers just in case there are any layers you want to preserve. We click OK. OK, and we zoom out here and we can see we've got all of our lines here ready to go. Now. Every fabricator is going to be different in terms of what they're expecting for you from their drawing set in terms of the DXF and F SVG. So the DXF would look just like this for them, but sometimes they want a SVG which has been color coded. And so, for example, some laser cutters will want to have a red line for anything that's cut, a blue line for anything that's scored, and black fills for anything that gets engraved. Okay, so what we can do if we want to do that is just go ahead and change our lines all the way up to red and then we have our red lines there. Anything that we wanted to be scored, we could change that to be scored as well. And then all we need to do from that point, once we're ready to go, is a file save as. Now, the beauty of working in Illustrator means that we can go ahead and add any text or anything we want to that we wanted to get engraved. So for example, before I sent this off to the engraver, the fabricator, what I might wanna do is add my name down to the bottom of this model. So this is gonna get engraved in nicely. And this might be called second year presentation model. And then it is by Chris Muburn. Change that to the world's best font. And then I'd be able to put that on there and get that engraved. Typically lasers, you might uh, lose some of your font if you go any lighter than book on a font size like this, but you can get nice and small in terms of the actual font size. So I can go nine point on that one there. Go ahead and make that 15 point so the name stands out. And then I would go ahead and put that in the bottom left hand corner over here. Then when I'm ready to go for my text, SVGs don't read text. So what we need to do first is convert this to a fill. So I need to right click, create outlines, and then I'll go ahead and use my Pathfinder, which is just over here, or you can go into Window Pathfinder. Then I'm just going to do my Unite, which is the same as a union. So if I ever had any fills overlapping each other or different texts overlapping each other, a laser will never see the overlap and you end up with a blank chunk here. So whenever you bring text in, all you need to do is Unite and you see it's actually joined them together as 
one piece now. So that is what you would do for your text as well. So I've created my outlines there for my text. These are now fills as I can see, it's not outlines, they are fills. Or even if I wanted to score my name instead of engraving it, I would just change that to fills and then I can do that as a hairline so they would get scored instead of filled. But personally, I prefer a fill engrave and so that would sit down at the bottom there. So we've got our cuts in red, we would have engraves in black fills and then blue or cyan we would use as our scores. Then once we're ready to go, we go to file, save as, we're going to save this as an SVG, this one down here. And then the settings are pretty important here as well. So make sure an SVG 1.1 type is an SVG with no sub settings. We're linking any images that come through, we're unchecking preserve. Edit Illustrator Editor. Yeah, let's try again. Unchecking Preserve Illustrator Editing Capabilities. CSS Profile Style Elements. We're going to one decimal place. Unicode Output Use. Uncheck Responsive. Uncheck Including. Uncheck Include XMP. Once we've got all that done, we click OK. And that is going to give us the SVG file. So if we go back into here, we can see I now have both my Y Columns Array in the DXF and the Y columns array in the SVG and I'd be able to send both of those over to my fabricator. The last thing that a fabricator might ask you to do is also submit a PDF which demonstrates what it is that you want to cut out. So for example, if I have a fabricator that doesn't know that this is the part that is wastage out of the material and this is the part I want to keep. Sometimes it's not that obvious when you've got some random shapes. Uh, they might think you want to keep the rectangle outside and then you have a screen in here with these little holes, Y-shaped holes inside. You, they never know. So what they would need to do is have some sort of diagram that illustrates the bits that we're keeping and not keeping. So what we can do is we can say in text format, so grab T, type text, change that to, let's go for 41, I'm going to say all Y shapes keep internals, all 3 mil plywood, all cut on red hairline, and that's it. Resize that, make that nice and big, and that's my instructions on there. And then, if I wanted to, I can even do an arrow over here as well, make it super, super obvious and plain what I'm trying to do. Over to stroke, grab an arrowhead. There we have that, and we can make that, of course, much bigger as well. There we go, and we can do that for each one of these. So. This, what we would do is we'd basically call it the same thing, but an instruction sheet. So once I've put all of my instructions all around this and we have our PDF ready to go, we do a file save as, this time we do it as a PDF, same name, but then instructions sheet. And then we save that. So uncheck preserve illustrator, that's fine. Save as PDF. And then we have our three files that we will send over to the fabricator for laser cutting. We've got our instruction sheet, we've got the SVG, and we've got the original DXF as well. From that, they will be able to figure out exactly what's going on and get their work done for you. That is all the files that they should need to do that. Okay, so exactly the same process now for our lamination file. This is the page size and we can put a note on there to say that that's the page edge or we could go ahead and just bring our actual page edge to that size as well. Delete the rectangle out of there. That's another way to do it too. What I would do is I would go ahead and grab all of these shapes inside here that are my text objects and I would actually just change the thickness and the color of these ones here. So I want these to be scores. So I would go ahead and grab a cyan blue, something like that. Change that to 0 0.2, 0 0.1, whatever it might be. And then I would just very quickly go ahead and do that for each one of these to go through. When I've done that for all of these shapes, 
I'll go ahead and follow exactly the same steps that we looked at for the Y shapes column and I'd make these three file types again. So I've got the DXF that I've already brought in here. I would put everything where it needs to be and then make the SVG file. And then I'll put some instructions over the top of it and make the instructions PDF. And that is the process for laser cutting. So that is the process of our CAM end of the software. You now see how we can take our drawings from Rhino and convert them ready to be received by a fabricator and taken to the laser cutting bed. At the end of the day, we're cutting things out of flat sheets. So we need to make sure that we're always putting our drawings out flat, ready to go. If you think about it logically and understand the thickness of the material that you're going to be working with, and you break up your model into sections of that thickness or you design your model that it's already in that thickness as you're modeling it in 3D, everything will already be ready to go for you and that will be the most streamlined way to work. Now, of course, if you do run into any issues while fabricating, do feel free to ask me or any one of the tutors all of which have plenty of experience with digital fabrication, especially with laser cutters as well. And your fabricator, the person that will be making your models for you, they will also be a wealth of knowledge. At the end of the day, it is they who will be choosing which type of drawing you need and what setup process is required as well. So always make sure you do ask the questions first, get on the phone, ask the quick questions. What file type do you need? What's your setup process? Do you need colored lines? Do you need hair lines? What would you like me to do? Do you just want my straight Rhino file, etc.? They will be able to help you. They'll tell you what materials are in stock and therefore you can plan your modeling based on that. Don't wait until the day you need the model to ask this because then you will need time to go back in and edit your drawings as usual. That's all for now, everyone. Happy lasering.